Well, it is time for episode four of the boat that guy built. The title of this next episode is Beans on Toast, because it's British and still don't oh. understand it's sick, why it's so good, but... Hey, man. Why not? It's a staple, and guys, a staple. So let's check it out. Three, two, one. Next, it's time to make a great British snack aboard Reckless. Oh what my god. Doing? But before the boys can cook up beans on toast, Guy has to make a tin can. But probably nobody's done it like this for the best part of 200 years. And nobody's ever made beans like this before. <laughs> <laughs> this is Guy Martin, part time world famous motorcycle racer and full time lorry mechanic. He's not looking pretty. Inspired by Britain's noble history of engineering, Guy and his best mate Maeve are scouring the country for the best inventions of the Industrial Revolution to kit out Reckless, their aptly named narrowboat. We should be proud of being British, and you know, I think people need to know, don't they? They've already brewed tea. Cheers, young man. Cheers, bro. In a homemade iron pot, yeah, built a steam-powered shower, and made their own sheets and a mattress. <sighs> Look at that. This week, they'll make their own cutlery, bread, and a tin of baked beans for a unique culinary experience, Industrial Revolution style. <laughs> it's all about packing two centuries of British brilliance into one boat, the boat that Guy built. All right, so we're... This episode's more culinarily inclined. There we go. Spence, you got this, man. I'm just going to be like, man, they come up with the craziest out-of-the-box scenarios. Like this time, in this episode, God plants his own beans and waits and then harvests them in <laughs> this 1800 harvester. And then I'm like, oh, my God, man. <laughs> like you're breaking every step down. I appreciate it. I love it. That's what I'm here. But, my God, when does he have time to train? For the for, for the race i think i don't know i don't know i've even heard that sometimes during tv shoots like uh if he has a job lined up uh in his lorry mechanic shop then he'll ditch the tv show to go work on that because of his values of being useful or i don't know what it was but that's what i'm talking about that's awesome yeah The boys are in the Midlands, and Maeve has been working hard on the latest improvement to Reckless, a kitchen. She's coming on treat, boss. Hi. Hey. It's going to be worth living in, won't it, the old girl? Tell you what, yeah. Looking apart, isn't it? All right, give us a lift on this work, Tom. All right. <clears throat> I'm impressed, though. Yeah. We'll get there, we'll get there. Are you off to put kettle on? That's where I'm going. Good man. Get the brew on. Yes. Peachy. Great. The kitchen is going to be an essential part of Reckless. You all right, boss? Back time. Brew up. Because although the boys are settling nicely into narrowboat life, the food they're eating leaves a lot to be desired. Are you having a look in there, Chief? Of uh, course I have. See, that's right, we're eating. Yeah. You're eating. Well, yeah. Not good for my diet, Yeah, that. but we haven't had out decent to eat. What Chief, are we going to do? Well, I've got a plan. Go on. English invention. Yeah. The tin can. And I want beans on toast. Well, but we that means a... we'll be nearly self-sufficient. If you can pull this off. Ooh. We're getting quite domesticated, boy. So you watch if we're getting there, aren't we? We're going to get laughed at. Do you reckon? Oh, aye. Right. Get laughed at. Well, whatever way, Chief. <laughs> the boys want a proper, wholesome meal of beans on toast, which means baking bread, then finding a way to toast it. First, though, Guy needs to make a tin can to store his baked beans in. He heads to Cannock in Staffordshire to find out how tin cans revolutionised food production by giving things a shelf life. Gameson's tinners have been using the same techniques to make tin plate for nearly 200 years. All right, lads. How's it going? You all right? Well, so go on, I just need a few bits tinning for me tin can. I've got to have my goggles on, I reckon. Yeah. Where, where do I start? The basis of Guy's 19th century tin is an extremely thin piece of wrought iron, which he needs to prepare with acid and a chemical cleaner called a flux, so that it will properly bond with molten tin. It comes out of the acid, over in there, into the cold water to cold the acid off, yeah. Yeah. Then into the, then in the flux. Yeah. Then you just put it on there. Up there. And I'm going into this, fella. Inside this vat is tin heated to 300 degrees, 
Once it covers the iron plate, it will make the iron corrosion proof and perfect for preserving food and guys' beans. If you see it spitting, just lift it back out. How much a tin have we got in there? About three and a half ton. Three and a half ton? Yeah. It's not cheap stuff, is it? No. Well, what's our money's worth in there, then? Oh, there's a 50,000 there. 50,000 quid. Then just drop it in the acid swill. Yeah? And that's done. Man, again, I appreciate that Guy is doing a lot of this uh, behind-the-scenes work of all the things that we take for granted. Yeah. This particular place is giving me the heebie-jeebies. It's it like, is. like you know, the that thing, that acid vat. Like, isn't yeah. that the start of some comic book heroes' uh, Joker, stories? Maybe. Joker. Like, but it this is coming, like, it looks like right out of Star Wars, dude. This is like... Where are you, man? That's crazy. Yeah. These, this is and that that was like everyday life then. Yeah, yeah. It's been operation for two hundred years. Yeah, more than that, I think. That's insane. Mm -hmm. God. Yep. Look at that. Like a new one. That's the best one yet. In it. We'll yep. finish that. That's the best one yet. Hey. Good job. <laughs> so far, so good. Guy has made his tin plate in exactly the same way as they did in the Industrial Revolution. Now tin historian John Nutting will help him make it into an actual tin can to store beans in. So where do I start? First of all, you need to put the, uh, the, the, the lap on the end, the joint on the end. That's the first right. thing. So it, so it joins the two ends. The biggest consumers of tin cans were the Navy, who loved being able to preserve food for long voyages. They kept a lot more than beans inside them. They were cooking things like uh, vegetables, carrots, um, veal, meat products, broth, um, anything that was nutritious as far as the, uh, the sailors were concerned. Get the That's calories the into the sailors, yeah. Precisely. Right, so we'll have a go bending this. I don't think this is going to be an easy job, by the way. Rolling by hand may look rudimentary, but it's a tried and trusted technique. There we go. What do you reckon? 19th century tins made exactly like this could keep their contents preserved way past the sell-by date, as proven when some provisions for an Arctic expedition were discovered years later. They found the cans in the stores, some were opened up, and the food was in reasonably good condition even then, and that was 115 years later. Would you have eaten it? Uh, I would give it a try. You would? We'd taste it, wouldn't well, we? Of course you would. You'd give it a shot. Of course so, you would. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about a lot of uh, sell-by dates. Usually, they're, they're like that's when the store has to sell them. This, the food's likely still good as long as there's not any funny smells or you know bugs crawling in and out or uh, it's like mushy or something. Generally, it those those cans will keep food for a long time. Long time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, uh, but and, and also the sell by date is just a way for them to reproduce or uh, re um restock product. Right, right. You know? It's more uh, of a economics thing, uh, more for like a math thing yeah. than not a, not quality, not food quality thing. Not food quality. No. Wonderful. Yeah, like a new one. Now the next step is to cut some more tin plate out in a circular form. Yeah, and then fold it over the ends. It's slow work. And back then, factories were only producing about 60 cans a day. Oh, I do a lot of these. They're nice. Um... Today's factories can knock out about 2,000 a minute. Right, John, so I've got my ends done. We need all drilling now, do we? Now you've got to cut a hole right. in, in one of the ends so you can, you've can you got enough space to put the beans inside, first of all. Right. That's, uh... We'll go find the sensor drill. Oh, aye. Right. That's a perfect hole. Grand job. It's not perfect, is it? Be a long shot. You've got to remember that probably nobody's done it like this for the best part of 200 years. So you reckon uh, not? <laughs> <laughs> That's working very well, I think. You reckon? With all the pieces made, Guy must solder them together. When was a bean first put in a tin? That was about 1880 or thereabouts. Ordinary people wouldn't have had this at first, so it was used for. It was like you know the, the sort of special foods that would have been used in the space shuttle. It was mm -hmm. high technology in those days, high and technology. so it would take about another 20, 25 years before ordinary people could buy these sort of foods. Well, there you go. Okay, how about that? Look at that. The first oh, tin. That's not bad, is it? 
That was 1824 version, I think. Yeah, I'll tell you that what. looks as knobbly as yours does, doesn't it? I reckon it does. Yes. Look at that. Peachy. Marvellous. Not bad. Well done. I don't know. If it had uh, rough edges like that, I don't know if I'd want to eat out of that. But then again, it's probably fine. It's just my eyes are used to clean cans, you know? Yeah. I mean, you made it, so I guess you have step in it, right? Yeah, exactly. <sighs> I, Jesus, dude. This is this next level. This is yeah. crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. And add it to the list of things that we take for granted. Okay. Now we know how it's how it's made. Tin and then, cans. And then, like, I was... I think I brought this up somewhere. I forgot where, but I've said this before. Um... It's it's funny how things get get manufactured for like military use, right? Like the navy would be the first ones to use this, and then yeah. eventually it would be available to the public. You know, yeah. so it's 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 crazy how innovation in, innovations work like that. Like yeah. where is it probably produced for military stuff like that, and then it just got to the the the, the citizen everyday citizen sector. Yeah, and and again, I think I said this in the last one. Necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. So that makes sense. Guy heads back to Reckless. All right, Chief. To proudly show Maeve the fruits of his labours. Now then. Now then, Cocker. What are you on with? Chief, we have a bit of success in the bean tin department. Ooh. You've been busy, haven't you? She's own brew, Chief. I can tell. <laughs> yeah. That don't look like something I've just dragged off the shelf <clears> in a... <laughs> well-known supermarket chain, no. does it? <laughs> Definitely in cheap, no. isn't it? No. Definitely in. Well, that's the size. That's the original. Is that right? 1824. Well, that's when you started using it in expeditions. <clears throat> that's what it was all about. That's what it was first developed for. Like the days of Captain Cook and all that. You've heard of Captain Cook, haven't of course you? I have. They'd be taking the food on the boat with them, but, you know, they'd be taking cows and sheep, but alive. Ready for slaughter and Yeah, but they take the food to feed the cows and the sheep yeah, with yeah. them. Yeah, so they saved all that care for chief. Oh, yeah, well, would they? Go on. Go on, then. Get cracking, chief. Now the boys have to fill the can with some baked beans in tomato sauce that they can eat later, using a homemade recipe of Maeve's that owes a lot to guesswork. Hey, Chief, do you know what you're doing? I'm making sauce for the beans. Hey, What's it you've I'm got more on the worktop well, than in the <laughs> world. Not known for my gastronomic skills. What are you doing, man? You no, don't no, 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 scrape it out. Get off. I'm in the kitchen. You're interrupting my creative flow. Oh, what? It really do look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> look at that. You've done that before, haven't you, mate? Oh, yeah. So these dudes are just going to take regular tomato sauce and put some cooked beans in with it. Ugh. These are dudes being guys, man. Yep. I mean, just simple. Just simple. I... As... Someone that is a little more culinarily inclined, it breaks my heart that they're not gonna like make it from like fresh ingredients. Like they made everything else from fresh ingredients, everything that's been built there. Why not baked beans? Maybe that's where you have, draw the line. Maybe they didn't have a farmer to to plant tomatoes for that. I day. guess. I guess not. Or there was wasn't an organic farm yeah. near the boat. Yeah, probably. If you have a recipe down below um, for homemade British style baked beans, please put it down oh, in the yes. comments. Yes. Anyway, Chi, Chi, you've, you've lost. What's happening here? What I'm just doing? making a sauce. So we've got a bit of what? Tomato puree. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought I'd put. Mate, what are you doing? I'm just putting a pinch of salt. Have you a pinch of salt? Yes. A pinch of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Absolved of anything doing with those salty ass potatoes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is that normal? Pinch of salt, man. That's a five or six Mississippi pour. That's a. Oh my god. That'd be too much if he was pouring liquor. Oh. Like, holy crap. Salt. What are you doing? Oh. That's a lot of salt, right? That's not just me. That's, that's a lot of salt. That's a lot of salt. I would assume that's a lot of salt. Wow. 
<laughs> yes! I, I am absolved. That's absolutely uh, yes. nuts, man. Okay. Ah! Talk <sighs> about <laughs> preserving. Yeah. yeah. That'll preserve very well. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's, oh my God. Okay. Jesus okay. Christ. I, Do you that may be way. I got to see how much of that is that a pinch of. You know how many people would be dead if that was their pinch? I had to click the button twice, and it was still, he was still pouring salt. Wow. Oh. Hey, yo. Look at that. You've done that before, haven't you, mate? Oh, yes. Anyway, Chief, Chief you've, you've lost me. What's happening here? What I'm just doing? making a sauce. So we've got a bit of what? Tomato puree? Yeah, 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 yeah. I just thought I'd put... Mate, what are you doing? I'm just putting a pinch of salt. You... That's eight, that's an eight-second pour. Oh my God! Their blood pressure is gonna be through the goddamn roof. <laughs> that is awesome. Hell on, yeah! On the that... bright side, it'll be uh, ready, fresh, ready to eat in 2055. Yeah, I love that. I love. I absolutely love that. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah. So not <laughs> only do they live life on the edge, they eat life on the edge. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm here for it. But then again, Guy is a motorcycle racer uh, doing the Isle Man TT. I guess you gotta, it, it's very, you get very sweaty. And with if you drink a lot of salt, it'll uh, retain a that's, lot of that water. That's so, instant mummification, dude. Yeah, I guess. You, I, I don't know. Oh my God, dude. Okay. <sighs> A pinch of salt! Yes. A pinch of salt! When baked beans were first introduced to Britain, they were considered a fine delicacy. Bonjour, no. How do? Sold only in fancy grocers, Fortnum and Mason. Probably one of them shops that you go to. But you no. what? I've what? heard of it, maybe. Oh, I've heard of it. Yeah. No more than that. It's in that um, village, London village, I think, as far as I know. Oh, that, that funny place downtown where yeah. everything's dear. We've but... got to get them fellas in there. So I assume we're, we're going to mix the two together. And it'll go through the funnel. Huh? Oh, look at them beans going in there. You're gonna give it a stir. Mate! <laughs> what are you doing? Right, hold that in there, driver. Chief, a bean's not gonna go through there. We're gonna get a bean through there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that noise doesn't fill me with confidence, mate. Wait, like, it's like standing behind the back of a horse, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> mate! I don't know what else to do. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh yeah, you're getting somewhere now. Chief, what's that? Don't take any fingers. Like <laughs> that. A bit of encouragement with your spatula. Come on. But still, no, Joe. No, Maeve, Maeve. Never has a tin been made with such love and devotion. Well, there was no other way of doing this. Joe, you know, I couldn't see it, could you? I mean, it's plain common oh sense to do it this way. Of course it is. To complete their historic canning process in the most authentic way possible, the boys first cook the beans inside the can, killing any bacteria. Then they heat them further with just a small hole left in the lid so all the air escapes. If Guy's soldering is perfect, no oxygen will get in and the beans will be preserved for a proper meal on Reckless at the end of the week. What about that? That's not bad at all. Dude, I don't think you need the soldering part. There's plenty of salt in there. It could k kill a, yeah. an army of slugs. Yeah, there's no... Why, why even... What? <laughs> like, I love how they properly made a complete annihilation of the kitchen. They're just like tomato sauce everywhere. Beans, you'll be finding beans forever on that boat. And it's like, yeah, let's do this again. Wow. Golly. First and last time they do this. That's yeah. for damn sure. Yeah, yeah. Just buy it in the store. Yep. <laughs> uh, that'll, that'll take you and me, all right? Yeah. yeah in the meantime, there are plenty more jobs to be getting on with. Not least, making something to eat their beans with. And there's only one place to go for great British cutlery, Sheffield, the city of steel. One business that flourished here during the Industrial Revolution was William Yates. Guys come to see David Wilkinson to learn how to make his own knives and forks. All right, Dave. How's right. it going, boss? All right, mate. The first job is to carve a knife blade into a pre-forged length of steel. It's a product that can be traced back to 1751, when a man called Benjamin Huntsman invented a way of making really pure steel. I mean, this is a fair 
sort of cutting edge method of eating your steel to 1600 degrees. Well, that's where the secret came from, was the temperature. You could get it up to 1600 degrees, and this made separating your, uh, your steel from the slag a lot quicker. So therefore, ending up with a better end result, a better steel, Sheffield steel. Huntsman kept his new steel making methods a secret. That's, that's not bad, that's a lot. Bit more there. Until, so they say, his main rival tricked them out of him. This cheeky young scallywag called Walker went round to Benjamin Huntsman's steelworks to suss out what was going on. But not only that, he went round as a tramp pleading poverty. You know, and um, others says, oh, you can sleep in there, it's warm and what have you. And they let him sleep in the, um, inside the steelworks. Anyway, what did he do? had a look round, he could see what was going on with the whole 1600 degrees method, the whole separating the steel from the slag method. Anyway, that was it. Once Walker had got this idea in his head, that's it, he went away and did his own thing. But then, once the method was out, that was it. Oof, Sheffield was away with it. Pressure at the bottom. Yeah. Just once at the top. Sheffield soon became the European centre of steel production and was home to a staggering 97% of Britain's cutlers. Good job. Thank you. Yep. Cheers, boss. Great, so where to now? With the knife blades shaped, guys got to make some handles as well. It's all right, Keith. Where do we start? Up to the stop, carefully. Right in. We, uh, I'm, I'm nearly on the production yeah, line, yeah, boy. You're nearly a professional. Come on, now, we're here now. Yeah, we're here yeah. now. Come on. Now he must stick the blades into the handles. That's it. First guy has to drill a hole in the centre. I like your leather thing, that has... Look at that, that's seen some action, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's older than me. Right. Fantastic. Then he has to force the blade into the opening. Has it gone all the way to the top? Right, that's it, guy. Take it out. Oh, yeah, job right. done. Impressed with that. That definitely ain't going to come off in the breeze, that, is no it? Way. Then it's a nice bit of buffing. And a further bit of polishing before a final sharpen. But that's not enough to shovel down beans on toast. It's over to the rest of the William Yates team to show Guy how to make a full set of utensils. Give it just one almighty tug. There you go. Look at that. That's took the gate off. And Guy won't be happy without a nice set of teaspoons too. So I've nearly got a full set of cutlery then, and we're nearly laughing. Well, not technically, because spoon isn't cutlery. You what? A spoon's not cutlery? The definition of cutlery is something that cuts. <laughs> so a nice cutlery, a but nice spoon cutlery, and a fork in cutlery. They're not cutlery now. And now he's got to shape his spoon on the fearsome fly press, which stamps down with ten tonnes of force. Hey, look at that. It's a nice shape, that, isn't it? It's not all brute force, this. It doesn't need ten tonnes. It will do delicate stuff. Go on, what would you use that for? What's that, like a necklace It is or a necklace. What have you got real there, Steve? It's the full Lord's Prayer. Oh, yeah. Who's made the die for that, then? It was a, a chap called Edwin Pryor in the 30s. We just fetch you the die. Now, that's the die that we use, and it was handmade, hand cut. Wow. Even wow. though Guy's cutlery is finished, the job isn't over. Each and every knife, fork, and spoon made here must pass the exacting standards of Anne in quality control. Right. Well, I've had a busy day today. Oh, yeah. Got all my eating implements ready. All right. Can you give me your opinion on them, please? Okay. And be honest. I will. If any item has even the tiniest flaw, it'll be rejected. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Happy yeah. enough? I am, yeah. Do you want a bit of etching, you reckon? Yep. Right. Finish them off, that. How do I do that? Come over here. Right. And the final touch is... That's it. Tick it off. ..the mark of Sheffield steel. Nice. Stainless Sheffield, England. That is nuts, man. Yeah. Add that to the list. Cutlery, utensils, spoons. And, yes, I have one of these around my desk. Don't judge me. Yeah. I have nothing. You usually have cutlery. I do have cutlery. I do oh, have okay. cutlery. There you go. <laughs> Are you? Uh, he's about to go get his and show it off. <laughs> I only this have my. What... I only have my letter opener. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. Letter opener. Got my, it. Just my letter opener. 
the letter opener. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but cutlery. Cutlery for the wind. For yeah. the wind? For the wind. You, you could cut a steak with that, yeah. you know? It's, it's about how you use it. Yeah, exactly. Next on Guy's agenda is the second most important ingredient of beans on toast. Toast. Bread used to be toasted simply by holding it over a fire. We need a proper electric toaster, don't we? We're going to have to get on the case. Toasters, toasty makers, microwaves. In fact, none of the appliances we take for granted would exist were it not for the greatest discovery of the 19th century, electricity. Up until then, it was just like a bit of a party trick, I suppose. People would sit and watch the thundering sky and see the lightning come down, and people would think that was fantastic, but no one, had, no one besides Faraday could say, oh, my God, you know, we could make something of this. Michael Faraday, a poor blacksmith's son from Surrey, started off as a bookbinder's apprentice. One of his customers got him a ticket to go to a Humphrey Davy lecture. Humphrey Davy was like a well-established scientist of the day. And, um, yeah, that flicked the switch in Faraday, in Michael Faraday, the 14-year-old lad. That flicked the switch inside him. Then Faraday knew he wanted to devote his whole life to, to the science, really. He knew the best way to do that was to get in with, um, with Humphrey Davy. Humphrey Davy gave Faraday a job as a lab assistant at the prestigious Royal Institution, and before long he was conducting his own experiments, including making a machine to convert movement into electricity. And while he was at the Royal Institute, he invented the Faraday spinning disc which was a way, yeah, of creating electricity. Fantastic. I reckon we should make one, Chief. What? These Faraday discs. Oh, all right. We're going to have a go. Pull her in, Chief. We'll get cracking. Guy gets a few essential Faraday disc ingredients delivered and leaves the rest to Maeve's carpentry skills. Yeah. Magnet either side. Yeah. We'll spin this. No. Are they about to make their own toaster? I hope so. Man, oh, wait, that's... so he, so okay, wait a minute. So they're basically building their own generator from scratch. They can yeah. make their own electricity that can hopefully power a toaster. Yeah. Okay. I think. I think. We'll get a bit of electric. Electricery. Electricity. Go say that again. Electricery. Electricery. Faraday had discovered a phenomenon in physics. Moving a magnet near a metal wire produced a pulse of electricity. Now he wanted to produce a steady current of electricity which could be used to power machines. Does that go in there, driver? If you just tap them home gently, like talking a cylinder head down, Chief. Faraday rotated a copper disc between two magnets. Although it was inefficient and only produced tiny voltages, it proved the theory that you could generate electricity. Yeah? Roll with it, baby. Look, Look at that. Look at that. She's a beauty. It's working. 6.2 millivolts of raw power. Go on, we're going to get to 10 millivolts, and we right. aren't giving in it until we've got to 10 millivolts. Right, you had 7 points. The quicker you spin the disc, the more electricity you make. 7.6, 8 points, 9 points. Oh, 9.4. Oh, I ain't giving in, Chief. We're having it. 9.4, then. 9.4, right. Why? We've got it, we've got it, we've got it. Yes. Oh, that's all right. Robert. Give it five. Yes. It may only have produced millivolts, but within the century, Faraday's hand-cranked disc evolved into massive steam-driven generators that powered the nation. We really can thank Faraday for switching on the toaster and all our other appliances. That is the first dynamo. What Faraday did, he's a man, isn't he? He's the Check one. him out. Enjoy it. Inspired by generating their own electricity, Maeve makes it his job to find an old electric toaster to help make their meal of beans on toast. Guy's final job is to visit a traditional bakery and sort the bread. We've got to dress you up a bit smarter than that for making bread. What's that, I'm mate? afraid. What's so it? I think we should start with washing your hands. Well, you'll not get foot and mouth off them, Colin. No, oh, I don't know about that. Colin Lomax has been a baker at Hovis for over 35 years. When in Rome... Let's have a look. Turn them over. They'll do. And he knows all about Britain's contribution to baking history. Does your mum get you ready in the morning? With the invention of wheat germ <laughs> bread. <laughs> Give me one, get me ready. <laughs> wheat contains about 85% white flour, about 12.5% bran, and this wonderful magical stuff called 
wheat germ, which is really good for you. In the late 1800s, wheat germ was steam-roasted to make a healthier flour on a massive scale. The only other things you had to add to make bread were water and yeast. Oh, I thought yeast was always like a powder. No, this is a traditional baker's yeast, and it really has it's to be looked like after. Is yeah, it? yeah. You see that? Yeah. It's one of the most important raw materials. You can't make bread without yeast. Mm -hmm. And this is a living organism. But if you taste it, it's a really lovely flavour. That lovely yeasty flavour. It's said to be good, really good for you. Was oh, it? Yeah, well, got some more, and it's got to be treated extremely gently. It doesn't like extremes of heat. Oh. You can kill it with hot water. Yeah. You can freeze it and you can kill it. And it doesn't like extremes of... We put a bit of salt on there. It's not going to start swearing at us, is it? If we it do, might uh, do. Can we, we can offend yeast more. quite easily, can and we? And then just rub it in. Well, let me have a go at this. All right. Can you see what happens? Hey, up. You, you see that? Yeah. So it doesn't like that at all. Yeah. Wow. So you're probably eventually killing it. Also, it's so screaming we, at us there, is it? So when we make bread, it we have to yeah. be extremely careful. Not to offend the yeast. In a oh, yeah, yeah. Have you done any bread baking before? No. Have you know anybody besides me that has baked bread or made... Well, Holly does. Holly does. She, okay. She, okay. Um, she bought one of those... Mm -hmm. Do it yourself. Bake a loaf machines. Oh, a bread machine. Yeah. So oh, we do. Okay. We we have experimented with chocolate bread, uh, like chocolate chip type bread, and just regular white bread. Okay. It's okay. Turned out very dense. Very yeah. dense, man. Oh, Not shoot. like airy. Just straight up. Oh, that's bread. Mm. Man, so. I was I was excited for a second, but then. I my grandfather Papa, rest in peace, um, baked bread all the time. That was one of his uh, things that he was passionate about was baking bread. So he taught me I taught me a lot about baking my own loaves, and uh, I have the most utmost respect for uh, the process of baking bread. And I know for a fact that using the uh, the uh, cake yeast, which is what they were using there, uh -huh. that's terrible. Don't do it. It's uh, it's very finicky and but then again uh, the best yeast to use is uh instant or rapid rice yeast but uh, uh there's there's ways that you can get more flavor out it out of it without uh having so quick of a rise and hmm. yeah uh, it's, all, yeah, it's you, all science at that point right baking yeah, is science yeah baking is pretty much science and you know uh you taught me about you know don't put too much salt in don't put sugar in have the water just at a certain uh, temperature. If it's too cold, they'll be asleep. The yeast will be asleep, and if it's too hot, the yeast will be asleep forever. Um, yeah. So there's there's a lot that goes into it. In fact, I've got yeah. a, a video of that linked down in the description Hell if y'all yeah. are interested in yeah. seeing me bake my papa's bread. There you go. So, but this 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 stuff right here. That in fact that guy Martin is uh, getting his hands in the loaf. Uh, uh, we'll see how it goes, man. Let's see. Yeah. In essence, bread making hasn't changed much since the ancient Egyptians and Romans. So, we've got the flour, I want you to make a bay. Just mix the ingredients. So now we've got the yeast. Leave them to naturally rise, then bake them. But like so many processes, bread making underwent significant changes during the Industrial Revolution. You're doing very well. If this is the first time you've done that, well, you're doing very well. My culinary skills go about as far as opening a tin of beans and <laughs> putting my toast in the toaster and applying a bit of butter and that's it. In the 19th century, Britain became much more conscious of health and nutrition. Push the dough against the table, so you're creating a bit of a mixing action. We may have been making advances in science and medical technology, but the cramped and smoggy industrial towns did nothing for people's well-being. Hovis founder Richard Smith was convinced his new type of wheat germ bread would provide a much-needed health boost. Yours is looking a little bit more presentable than mine. But putting quite a bit of your uh, strength into that right. to really develop the dough into a nice, smooth consistency. Smith went all out. That right there, I, Papa did that. I use a stand mixer.
it's just easier unless i i really want to get a workout i will i will i it, it's fun to knead the dough but who has time for that it's very true yeah very true but back yeah. in the day they only had that so right right and the whole thing of you know make a well of flour put all the ingredients in and the it'll take in as much flour as it needs and then start kneading it that's that's fun to me i have oh, I fun bet. doing that that sounds like a science class yeah it, uh, it, it, and, like, and it's science that you can eat yeah the best the best kind yeah fuck doordash yeah <laughs> out to prove his bread was good for you even getting doctors to endorse his products wonderful so put that down there the marketing worked soon his bread was being snapped up by the health conscious victorians that's really good. What we've got to get to do now is get them into the prover. Fine, I'll put mine on the top tray. The proving cabinet is where the bread is left to rise for 40 minutes. Enough time for a nice tea break before it goes into the oven. Guy, you can see the thing. Okay, so for anybody that has never baked a loaf of bread, uh, here is the straight dough method. Uh, you basically mix all your ingredients together, knead it, let it rise, punch it down, let it rise again, bake it, cool it, eat it. There you go. <laughs> it's, it's simple. It's simple. Increase almost doubled in size. And Chris is ready to peel into this really traditional deck oven. It looks like it's come out of the act. How old is it? <laughs> it's an old one. The deck oven is the same as those Smith would have used, except these days it's fired by oil rather than coke or wood. You'll see lots of bakers praying at the side of the oven Is that right? once the bread's gone in. <laughs> <laughs> Time for another cup of tea, and then it's the moment of truth. Nice. The bread's ready, guy. Why? Oh, I'm going to ask Chris to peel them out for us. Peel, peel them like. out. That's the word, is it? There you go, Carl. Thank you. And traditionally, when you bang it on the bottom, if it sounds well, hard. Oh, oh, yeah, get a lovely sound old, old yeah. sound. Definitely. You know that the bread's baked. So we've got a lovely loaf, nice shape, and that's ready for coming out of the oven. He hasn't done too badly at all, except for that little one on the end. <laughs> yeah, he's the black sheep of the family, that fella. Poor little bugger. Hey, could be worse, could it? Not bad, man. Not bad for a first time. I'd eat that. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't leave the bakery. I'd be so hungry. I'd be like, yeah, I'm eating all these. I mean, it would leave the bakery just in your stomach. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, right, unless you hung around there for a little while and there was a usable bathroom. Very true, too. Back on the boat, Hello, young mom. Maeve has come up with the goods, too with a very old toaster indeed. Hi, oh, actually, if you've been busy, what have we got here? Well, that, that, right, is a replication of the first electric toaster oh, yeah. called the Eclipse. <laughs> this grandfather of toasters was invented by the fabulously named Colonel Rooks Evelyn Bell Crompton, who also oh, built nice. one of the first ever power stations and set up a company making some of the earliest electrical appliances, a risky business in the first days of electricity. A lot of his first electrical appliances used to actually catch fire because oh, yeah. he used iron iron wires. See him? Oh, why? I think we'll be all right, so Chief. We'll get our door stops in there, boy, won't oh, we? Aye. Well, yeah. I mean, what do you reckon? Good inch? And I reckon we'll get some good door stops out of them. Yeah, it's a replica of the original Horvis bread loaf, boy. It's not that old, is it? We've got some little baby ones, and I've got the full-size job. And then, of course, there's the cutlery. So here we go. We've got a forks. Let me have a look at one of them. That's okay. awesome. Stainless steel, Sheffield, England. I could do with air course. The boys finally have all the ingredients for a slap up snack of beans on toast. As long as <laughs> the beans have survived the week in their homemade cat. Yeah. Oh my god, I love them. That's a sign of dudes being guys. I love that dude. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that cutlery that he got from Sheffield, that ain't going to do it with a loaf of bread. You need nope. something rustic. Yep, saw. Yeah, and it, that, I mean, honestly, that's very close to a, a, a actual bread knife. So yeah. he, he did a smart thing there. He yeah. does a lot of smart things. Yeah. But, but I, just, I feel like that's the saw that he used for the whole project so far. And I'm like, 
That's why it's good. That's yeah. why the bread tastes good. Because you cut it with the saw that you cut the plumbing with. And you cut the copper with. And you cut the wood with. Yeah, fuck the wheat germ. Fuck yeah, fuck the wheat germ. Here's real <laughs> germs. Hell yeah. Oh, you did a good job of that, didn't you, Chief? Hey, you look at that. The thing is, Chief, we're hungry. Yeah. Those desperate measures. <laughs> <laughs> Get one slice oh of these. Two, two boy. I say, I am right looking forward to these beans on toast, boys. Hey, oh, young man. Have a look at them. Hey. That is culinary excellence. Right, where's the, the pot? pot? Right, what she send, Chief? I'm tipping these beans in hey, here. Up, go on. Can you remember how much salt you put in them, Chief? That's the only thing that's worrying me a bit, really. Right. <laughs> that was a lot of salt. Only a pinch. <laughs> go for your life, boss. Go right. for your life. Look how long that. do you reckon? You've done a job of that. I'm impressed. <sighs> We've got serviettes, maybe. We've got serviettes. Yeah, hey. I've got one here, look. Look at this. You know when you get a bit round your mouth? Oh! <laughs> right! My mother would kill me. Oh, she'll be right. Keep an eye on them beans, boss. The beans are looking good. But what about the volatile Crompton toaster? 1893, the old toaster. She hasn't set light to the torch yet, so she's not doing a bad job. Well, you're not far away. She's smoking like an old chainsaw. It seems to be working, even if Guy has to turn the toast by hand. And the posh cutlery is being put to good use, <laughs> although probably not in the manner intended. Oh, wait, Chief. A bit cremated. Oh, I'll have that one. I'll have that one. <laughs> How toasted do you like your toast? Not at all. Like, no. like I, I just I just don't. Uh, you know how our toasters have settings, and those are minutes, right? Yeah. Right. Mine is always at two. Like oh, that's, okay. That's where I'm at. My okay. wife is at like four. Four. And I'm like, oh. yo, that's a brick. Can't yeah. do it. Yeah. Granted, if you eat it right away, awesome. But when in life do you have like no one has their life together that much to eat bread right out of the toaster? You know what I mean? Not, yeah. not in our household. No, no, no. no, no. I not didn't instantly think so. eat bread. So, no. Yeah. Um, I will know. say Nana's uh, at four as well. I'm at a three. I'm, okay. I'm sometimes three and a half um, when I make breakfast sandwiches in the morning and I spread uh, condiments on there. Like, I, I, I like the uh, contrast of that. Got it. I like, it's not too toasted, but then again, it's enough sturdy to hold on to yeah. uh, a spread. Yeah, I just need something to melt butter. Yeah, I got you. That's pretty it. That's pretty much it. So. Mm -hmm. Right, come on. Yeah. Come on, Brian. Look at this young man. Hey, you looking forward to it? Yeah. Jumping in the boat. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. All right, young man. What? How's it going? Now, Chief. Good. Beans on toast. Come on. This is come the on. life. Don't you reckon? Are you ready? How are we doing it, Chief? Knives and fork. Come on, is that where we're going? Yeah, right. and you have to eat it like a student, look. Right, Chief, I'm going for a bit of a combination. I don't care what you're going for, I'm hungry. It's the moment of truth. Will Maeve's beans do justice to all that hard work and glorious British innovation? Maeve, <laughs> 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 they're bad. I guess not. Oh. <laughs> you make me do it. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> <coughs> The beans, the beans are rock are hard. Rock. <laughs> they're rock hard. <laughs> I can manage the rest. It's like eating the gravel. Beans. The bread is absolutely fabulous. El fantastico. El, the cutlery. Oh, oh, they are something else. They are. They really are something else. The tin can. Well, they've been in there a day or two. Where is and it? And it wasn't rotten. It, you looks, to it, it. it looks like some of the fire brigade have had a go at. It <laughs> does. But Chief, it did its job. We can't knock it, can we, really? No, no. Mm -hmm. Right. Go on. The bean sauce. All right. It's not. It could do with some more salt. Maybe a fraction. Chief, I would say that's a success. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> Good I'm going to finish him. Are you going to finish yours? No. <sighs> Next, poor old Reckless picks up a few more bumps and bruises on her travels. Oh, oh my god. Apologize. It's high time for a makeover, complete with some 19th century interior decorating. Guy's hoping his steady hand and eye for detail will make reckless into the pride of. Okay, okay. Like... <laughs> well, 
Uh, that's like a lot of salt. We we that's basically exactly how we did the potatoes. For, that's at the end of the video. Yeah, they were cooked, and they were salted. Way too salted. You know. It was, they were, don't to try experimental recipes for roasty potatoes in a full Sunday roast. Just don't do it. Just one or two pokes at the fork. That's all you need. And or or maybe just bake the potatoes and roast them, cut them up like that. Yep. Cuz <laughs> but I, I hey, overall this has been super interesting, dude. It's, Honestly, man, all joking aside, yeah. the process of the tin can and the toaster yep. and the bread, I, mean, I knew that already. It was a lot of interesting stuff man, covered it's, in this episode. It's just, I, I think you can't defeat the hand quality, handmade stuff from back in the, what was it, the Victorian era? Yeah. Uh, you yeah. just can't beat the quality. That stuff is still around. 100%. So it was built to last. And that's what I'm getting through this whole process. Is that they built stuff to last back yeah. then. Oh, well. It's shame they don't do that. And they've, shame that they found out that it's more money uh, in making them terrible so that they break and you have to buy another one than making a product that will last. That's tough, man. Well, yeah. it's just everywhere now. So. Oh, well. <sighs> That's why I like I like what we're doing. I like spotlighting this stuff because it's it's good for me to, to learn, man. Just like yeah. oh, like you said, you just it's one of those things I never thought about ever in my day life is how who thought of the can? The Brits did. That's crazy. And we are forever grateful for it as Hell a yes. result. Hell yes. And we all thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and watching another video. What else, Dan the man? Unplug and do something epic, guys. And Hold back on the salt. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> See y'all next time. Later.